Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla. I am the Gorilla, and today we're going to do a tutorial that starts in Cinema 4D, but it ends up in Photoshop. And this trick also works in um, After Effects. So um, we're mostly going to talk about this kind of post-processing trick that I've been using lately, and uh, and how it might help you if you're doing anything where you need to kind of use your images somewhere other than your final render. So let me show you what the heck we're talking about, and let's head on into Cinema and start this thing. So. What this is, is a render on pure white. And I've been doing this a lot lately. Um, you have a site redesign we're working on, and um, we need these kind of pure white images that'll go on a white background, right? So uh, what we have, let me show you the scene. What we have is an alarm clock here, textured with chrome, and uh, a little bit of white for the back here. And then it's lit by the HDR uh, Studio Pack, and the, it's specifically the studio rig here, which has the, the floor built in and the background. And we could just pick that color and make the whole thing white, the background, the floor. And then it also catches all the shadows here, which is what we want. And then we could load in an HDR and light and make all these reflections and everything. So that's the scene. Uh, and then the textures we have, kind of this chrome material and a little bit of scratches from the texture kit just to make it a little bit imperfect. Not that perfect chrome, but like a little bit of a vintage kind of beat up look. So uh, if you're interested in the scene, that's kind of what's going on. But what we have is this white background and when we go to render this thing, it's gonna chug on it. We're using the progressive render here and uh, uh, it's just gonna refine and refine and refine this. And what, what comes up all the time is that when you render on white, and this is where we get to the problem finally and talk about how to fix it. When you render on white, um, a lot of times you want to use that on a white background and use it in different places. So for, for me, this render was, is going to be used on this, on this website um, design I'm working on. And I want the white of the website to kind of bleed into this photo and make it look seamless, right? So I render this out on pure white and hopefully when I put this on the website or if if you work in uh you know in different areas maybe you're making a render for um for a magazine or anything else where it's going to sit inside of a different border if that makes sense um so let's head on into photoshop here now that we have um now that we have our render and stop uh, popping up there i'm trying to cheat here and do a screen capture so okay so let's screen cap this while we have it let's shut off the render stop rendering do you want to stop it? Yes, please. Okay, let's head on into Photoshop, make a new uh, scene here, and it's automatically going to set up a new um, comp that is the same size as what I copied. So I could paste that in. Everything's looking fine. And let's say you send this dude out to the client, right? So now, client gets it, and they go, cool, this looks great. So I'm going to make a larger composition. Maybe it's the website or wherever it's going. And they want to maybe make a little website for this object. Uh, maybe they're selling this alarm clock or something like that. So they grab it and they paste it in and they come up here and they make like uh, like a little um, title, let's say. It's called uh, alarm clock. And uh, they need it to be not on white. So there you go. Um, let's make this real light. And also grab something a little wider okay so let's say they're trying to lay this thing out they have alarm clock and then they have you know like why why you should buy it or whatever this is but now they're using your image right and you're gonna see the problem I, I hope you can see it on your monitor it's a subtle problem but uh, it it pops out a lot of times and this happens a lot to me which is if you if you're looking you might be able to see this border that's around it now we may think that this whole thing is all kind of pure white all the way around. But because of some of the long shadows and the way that it, it's lit, we can't always be sure that it's pure white, even though it looks pure white, right? We can see these sh darker shadows here, darker shadows here. But to our eye, in my eye, this looks like it falls off to white. But in reality, there's a lot of gray and coloring all the way around the inside of this. And this is not good. So there's a couple ways to fix this. Um, the big problem is that it's such a subtle problem that let me show you kind of an exaggerated version of this. So I am going to turn up the levels. So this is kind of making it more contrasty. And now you're going to be able to see this 
uh, problem a lot more, which is this is all kind of squared off on the bottom edges. And this, this little levels trick is the exact thing I use to get rid of this problem. So in other words, it's a subtle problem to see, but by using a levels and taking the gamma and cramming it up like this, you could really start to see those edges, see that? So now you have, you have a visual reference of what you need to basically paint out. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this. You could erase it, you could do a lot of things, but here's what I end up doing. I go to my layers and I go below my levels here and I add a new level and I grab a paintbrush by hitting B and I make sure it's a white paintbrush and I go over to opacity and I make it around 50 flow around 50 and then I just start to slowly paint that edge and you can see it creeping in now in real life without that levels you're barely gonna see a difference right it's even hard to see right now the difference between this but um, but this is this is the way I fix it really make it contrasty and then subtly kind of float that that shadow in right make this shadow look a little more natural on the edges like this and make, make sure it's kind of sweeping into the middle of the of the clock there. And you don't want to get rid of too much. You don't want to eat away all the way up to the clock because you want those natural shadows to kind of stand out. But you don't want them to clip on the edge unnaturally. So now we have kind of natural shadowing going around the clock. Uh, and then we turn off our levels and now we lost it. See how, see how clean that is now compared to where we were. If I turn this off, very subtle difference. And if we turn our little levels blaster on, we could turn that on and off and see the difference. And that's it. That's basically the trick. Now, I've done this in After Effects. I've done this in Photoshop. Anytime you need that kind of perfect white seam and you're not, and, and you think you almost have it, but you don't, add a little layer there and just start to paint out some white and then you'll be fine. Because then on top of that, you can grab your, your curves or whatever you want to do and start to uh, adjust on top of that. And you're never going to get that uh, edge to show up again. Um, so that's it. Before we go, man, I got to find a, a better typeface than that. Let's grab, uh, let's grab knockout. Yeah, this thing, this thing I dig. Okay. So there we go. So now we could bring this down here, maybe open it up a little bit and give it like a little bit of a color. All right. So that, there you go. So now we have, um, Let's just make a little square. Doop. Cool. So there we go. So now we have our little page and, and we don't have our bleed and we got our title and the whole deal's all set to go. So anyway, that's it. That's a, just a quick little thing. I've been uh, using this uh, this morning a lot, actually. And uh, so I decided to uh, pop open a tutorial and just show you guys just in case you ever run into this problem. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We'll have some uh, bigger tutorials soon. And I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.